Kevin Matthews joins me now from the U.S. state of Virginia. He's an assistant professor of European history at George Mason University. Uh, great to see you again, Kevin. The end of an era we heard one of the most recognized people in the world for decades. She has witnessed history and made history. Is there anyone else that comes close? No one that immediately comes to mind. When you consider the fact that when uh, Elizabeth became queen, Winston Churchill was prime minister of Great Britain. Harry Truman was president of the United States. Joseph Stalin was the leader of the Soviet Union. And Mao Zedong was the leader of China. Uh, you know, you're talking about another age, um, a, a time before anybody had ever heard of Elvis Presley and, and the Beatles were adolescents in Liverpool. Well, the new UK Prime Minister Liz Truss said earlier that Queen Elizabeth was the rock on which modern Britain was built. Now that she is gone, what does that mean for the future of the United Kingdom? Will we see Scotland finally pull away? What about the Commonwealth countries? Some are already trying to pull away. I'm not so sure that it's going to have an impact on the breakup of the United Kingdom. There are other issues that are going to bring about that, if it does happen, of course. Uh, those are political matters between uh, the conservative government that Britain now has and the Scottish National Party uh, especially, and, and the problems that have been brought on by Brexit in, in Ireland. Uh, as far as the Commonwealth is concerned, uh, if any one major country is going to perhaps use this as an occasion to declare a republic, that might be Australia. I don't think it's going to happen with New Zealand or Canada anytime soon. But then there are other smaller countries around the world um, where uh, the mon British monarch is still the head of state, uh, 15 in all. And some of them might think that it's time to, uh, to leave behind what uh, some might consider a relic. Elizabeth is very much a, 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 a living, was, was a living connection with the World War II generation. She was in the British Army at the very end of the war. Um, and so she is a link to a past that very few people can remember now, which um, may, may give cause for some to want to change course. Well, you mentioned connections. You also mentioned Brexit a moment ago. Um, the UK has certainly seen a lot of change. There's new leadership, uh, a changing face of the people who live there. What does the future hold there? And how much does a monarchy actually matter to everyday people? Well, it, it seems if you if you listen or look at, at, at public opinion surveys, the younger uh, the respondents are, the less they have any connection with the idea of monarchy. But it's strange how the British monarchy has managed to adapt over the years. And that was mainly thanks to Elizabeth. She had a very uh, deft ear for changing times, and she had a good sense of humor. Uh, for example, when the London Olympics were opened in, in 2012, um, they had a little film clip at the opening for the opening of the Olympics where she is with uh, Dan the actor Daniel Craig playing James Bond. And the climax of the scene is where the two of them supposedly parachute into the London Stadium. So Elizabeth was very smart in that respect. Uh, now, whether Charles can, can pick up that baton is another question, but we'll have to see. Um, he's picked the name Charles III, which in some ways is, is smart. It's continuity. Uh, he's been known that all his life. But I must say, the, the first two Charleses have left a mixed record. Um, the first Charles was beheaded, and the second Charles was known as England's Merry Monarch, but he's also known as England's most cynical king. So um, whether he can, he can uh, learn from his mother's um, long reign is another question. We'll just have to see. All right, Professor Kevin Matthews, thank you so much for joining us.